Could this be the perfect Mac monitor? So something really exciting from Samsung was actually announced the other day on YouTube, and it was actually their 5K resolution monitor, the Viewfinity S9. So in this video, we're going to watch that release video and also break it down because it actually stacks up really well if you have a Mac or a MacBook and you need a new monitor and the studio display is a little bit too expensive for your budget. So without further ado, let's just get stuck straight into the trailer. Okay, so right off the bat, it's pretty clear, I mean, what monitor Samsung is trying to compete against, and that is obviously the studio display. Now, you can see in terms of design, it's very, very similar, almost identical. And I'll actually put up two images on the screen now side by side, so you can actually see for yourself. Now, some people have already received this particular Samsung monitor, and they've reported that while the base is made of aluminum metal, uh, the actual chassis is just plastic that's just painted silver. So obviously the Apple Studio Display is miles ahead in terms of build quality at this stage, but everything else looks pretty similar. I mean, you do get obviously the stand that comes with the S9. It looks like you have some pretty good adjustability there. And don't forget that if you want that up and down adjustability with the Studio Display, it's actually gonna cost you extra. Okay, so in terms of color accuracy, uh, this is really impressive. I mean, 99% of the DCI P3 color gamut, uh, which is a really popular color gamut if you're doing video or photo editing, is a really good thing to have on a monitor. And it's actually higher than the Apple Studio display because that only goes up to about 98%. So this particular Samsung monitor is actually more color accurate than Apple's basically latest and greatest offering. And that smart calibration feature was actually really interesting to me because if you didn't already know, every single monitor will experience something called color drift. So when a monitor is manufactured and it has a high level of color accuracy like these monitors do, they're generally calibrated in the factory. So they're actually tested, calibrated and adjusted to reach like 99 or 98% of a certain color gamut. But over years and you know, the more you use it, there's something called color drift that will actually come into effect. And that color accuracy will actually decrease very slightly, uh, you know, after a couple of years or months or however long it takes. Now, traditionally what you'd have to do to improve or change the color accuracy after purchasing a monitor is you have to go out and spend a couple hundred bucks on a colorometer or some kind of color measuring device and sort of do it manually that way. If you guys have been a fan of this channel for a while, you would have seen me use it in a couple of my monitor review videos. So the fact that Samsung has included this on an app and it seems really easy to do is actually really exciting if you're someone who needs a high level of color accuracy on a monitor. Okay, so Samsung is mainly showcasing the benefits of having a 5K resolution screen. So obviously you'll get increased screen real estate and you know things like movies and images and videos will be uh, a little bit clearer because you obviously have more uh, pixels on the screen. But the main thing to take away here and actually to look at is the 5K resolution itself. Now, long story short, macOS is actually designed to be scaled a particular way on a monitor, and it only works best with certain resolutions. Now, I'll actually throw up an image here from an article that I'll link down below that will show you this in a little bit more detail. And as you can see there, if you're buying a 4K resolution monitor, there are a couple of issues. Now, don't get me wrong, like it still works perfectly fine. There's just a few minor drawbacks. For example, some minor blurriness and artifacting, and obviously a very slight performance decrease. Now I'll link this other article from Apple Insider that will explain this in a little bit more detail. But essentially, ideally, if you have a Mac computer, 
you want a monitor that's actually going to scale perfectly with that Mac. So uh, usually it's been a 5K monitor, like 5K is the best because it gives you that really high uh, retina-like resolution. Uh, but the problem traditionally has been that there's not really that many 5K monitors available. Up until the studio display was released last year, literally your only option was the LG Ultrafine 5K display. And I mean, that had its own issues. Like it was a relatively cheap, ugly looking monitor, like big bezels, uh, black plastic. It's just, it wasn't really that great. And then obviously last year, Apple phased that out and now they're going with the Apple Studio display. And it's a great monitor, but the problem is it's, you know, 1600 US dollars, which is definitely a lot of money for a lot of people. And it's actually more expensive than the actual Max most people are using currently. So the fact that we're now seeing other 5K resolution monitors come out from other companies that are not Apple is a good thing because it just gives you more options as a consumer. Okay, so this part is interesting because it looks like the Viewfinity comes with anti-glare coating, which most monitors these days do come with, uh, except the Apple Studio display. You actually have to pay an extra 300 US dollars to get what Apple calls the nano texture coating, which is essentially just marketing fluff for a uh, matte anti-glare display. Now, is this really a big issue? No, I don't think so. I mean, personally, I prefer glossy monitors. I mean, the colors look better. Uh, things like text look a little bit sharper as well because the matte covering is kind of like a little layer of diffusion. So it makes it a tiny little bit blurrier. Uh, but if you're in an office uh, where there's a lot of like really bright overhead lights, or for example, you have a home office and there's a lot of natural ambient light coming in from windows that you can't close, for example, a glossy screen is going to be an absolute nightmare. Trust me, been there, done that. Where is it? I Okay, so this looks like another W for Samsung. I mean, if you compare the ports on the Viewfinity S9 to the Studio Display, they are pretty much identical. I mean, you get the same Thunderbolt 4 and the same three USB-C ports, uh, but you also get a, an additional port on the Samsung, which is the mini display port. So this isn't really a massive difference, like I said, but hey, extra ports are always good in my book. So this is Samsung's 4K slim fit camera and it kind of looks like it just slips into the back and I hope that you don't have to then connect it with a cable at the back. I assume you don't. I assume there's some kind of connector built into the back there. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how this performs compared to the built-in studio display webcam, right? Like the studio display webcam is 12 megapixels. It's okay, it's not gonna blow you away. Whereas this one looks like it is 4K. It also doesn't look like it has any kind of special tech. It looks like you have to actually manually adjust uh, the actual camera at the top. Unlike the studio display where A, you can't adjust it, it's built into the actual monitor. Uh, and B, it has center stage. So it'll actually follow you around and sort of zoom in and out intelligently. Now, personally, the webcam looks a little bit gimmicky to me. I don't really like things sticking out of the top of my monitor because I prefer to have a light bar there instead. And you obviously can't really do that if you're using the webcam. I just prefer the more sort of streamlined and inbuilt look uh, of the Apple Studio display, right? It's just built straight into the glass. And it looks like Samsung is going to wrap it up with the Smart TV Apps feature. Now, 
Personally, that's not something that I would ever use, but hey, you know, it's always nice to have. Okay, so let's talk about what this new monitor means for not only Mac users, but how it kind of stacks up to the Apple Studio display. I've already talked about this a little bit, but I wanna mainly focus on price. Now, according to Mac rumors, it's going to be selling for around 1300 US dollars. And just bear in mind that as of this video, it hasn't yet been announced in the US, so the retail price might actually be a little bit lower than that. And don't forget that that is just the recommended retail price, right? Like when it comes to actually selling it, companies like Samsung will make it available for sale on resellers like Best Buy or Amazon. And often they will actually heavily discount it right after it launches. So we could potentially be seeing the price closer to maybe $1,000, maybe like $1,100. And I think if Samsung can get the price to around that $1,000 price point, it's gonna be a quite a significant savings over the Apple Studio display and will make it a really attractive option because you're getting pretty much all of the functionality and all of the quality. Uh, and in some areas, it's actually better than the Apple Studio display when you look at things like color accuracy, uh, but you're only paying, you know, five or $600 less. And sure, obviously the Apple Studio display is gonna be functionally better. I mean, it's designed and built specifically for Macs. Uh, also, the build quality is amazing. Like I've never seen a better build quality on a monitor. It's, you know, machined aluminum. It just feels really good. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just gonna be sitting on your desk for like three or four years. You're not moving it around. You're not touching it all the time. So build quality really isn't that much of a factor in my opinion. If you look at the Apple website, once you select the nano texture glass and also the tilt and height adjustable stand, that's $2,299. So if the S9 can come in and give you all of that for $1,000 or $1,100 and you get the 5K resolution, color accuracy is better, uh, you know, the webcam's good as well. That's a pretty enticing offer. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm definitely gonna be picking up one of these bad boys to test on the channel, maybe even compare it to the Apple Studio display. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.